Hello. This time it's the wonderful wheat ears. I sometimes think that wheat ears combine the best qualities of closed loose coils and alternate side looping. Like alternate side looping, they can be very safe. A lot of glue helps to keep them in the right place. But they've also got the elegance of closed loose coils. So we use them a lot. And recently, in their loose wheat ear forms, we've been able to create a lot of new variations, some of which I'm going to show you. Okay, so we are going to start, as always, with the simplest forms we can of wheat ear. Um, and again, I'm going to use wider strips than usual so that you can see what I'm doing clearer. So a wheat ear goes like this. Um, I'm going to first of all go racing through it and then I'm going to um, do it slowly in stages. Basically what's going on is the loops that I'm making in the strip are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So as you see this is the that's the effect we're going to get. So now I'm going to talk you through exactly what I did. So I'm going to make the first loop um, and we'll just make it a nice usable sort of a size. Then I'm going to put a little bit of tiny touch of glue on its tip and come round. Now I'm holding the loop that way with my left hand and this way with my right hand. That way with the left, this way with the right. So I'm pinching the end here. And then I'll make a bigger loop. So that means bring the loop over the top and put it here. Now having got it there I then sort of hold it and see how big that distance is between the two loops um, because I may wish to adjust them and pull it forward and backwards. Um, a tiny bit of glue again. Come round, make the loop bigger. See, I can adjust it with my left hand. If I want these, this distance to be exactly the same, I can adjust it as I go. A um, little dot of blue again, and I go again. So pinching every time with this hand and holding sideways with the other hand so that I can adjust that, the size of that loop. Not easy for me to see because I'm showing it to the camera and not to me. So this is a bit odd way to carry on. But I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. So um, 
As usual, tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of glue go on here, just the smallest bits, because uh, it will ooze to some extent. We don't really want it oozing out. Uh, a bit more. Keep going. Okay, just that as I go. Hope I'm getting it regular. Oh, this could be the last loop, I'm thinking. It's not going to go back. So if I wanted this loop to be, this sweet ear to be bigger, um, I would tear it off here and add another strip. Wheat ears can be incredibly long. Um, so, but this one I'm going to leave this side. But it's, sometimes I do cheat and add another one as I go, but really it's better to stop here and then start adding. You can always keep your spare bit for something else, can't you? So there is your, there's your basic wheat ear. Um, basic, ordinary, formal wheat ear, all the same, loops all the same distance apart. And as you see, this simple one starts out always as a um, teardrop sort of a shape, but you can reshape it, you can shape it some more, just like you can with a closed loose coil. So for example, I could turn it into an eye shape, um, and I could turn it into a leaf shape. Sometimes that eye shape is called a marquise by some people. I don't know if this one's got a, another name, but anyway, um, I just call that a leaf shape. Um, but you can basically shape them into all sorts of different shapes. So here's one I made earlier. Um, and it, you know, it can be a triangle. If you like, it can be a square. And there are various ways of doing this, but you can just shape a You can shape your wheat into many, many different shapes. Um, and another thing you can do, which I find very useful, is to make a very long version of this. Wheat ears make amazing leaves. They look really good when you're trying to show a long, narrow leaf, like on a um, tulips or daffodils. So if you want to make them nice and long, snowdrops are there another one where you might need it. So I think that's that's great for that. So there's a nice long narrow leaf that I've made. You can also, by the way, make them even longer and narrower by um so that you would so that you can then create really good stalks. I always think flower stalks need um, well, one strand, one length of strip might look okay, but it's sort of um, it's a bit thin. So a long, narrow wheat ear is possibly the, the better thing to do. So um, like these ones, these stalks here are long, narrow wheat ears to make good stalks. So obviously what I do is I'll make a little loop. Now my next loop is going to be really, really big gap between uh, the first and the second loop. And then the third one, even longer. So really, really big loops. Um, and then I'll just glue that down. There. Then if I want it to be a stalk, I'll use my nail and scratch so that I've got a nice, tall, long stalk. So if you had your um, flower made of wheat ears and you needed a stalk for it, that's going to go um, like that. And then it can have a long, narrow leaf to go with it. Um, yeah, I'll put that there. stay upright. Um, so you've got all, virtually all wheat ears here, apart from this fringe flower at the middle. Um, but, oh, and by the way, this has got nothing to do with 
wheat ears particularly, but I just want to point something out to you. Um, you'll notice here that I've made these petals fairly, well, that, these two are big, these two are middle-sized and those two are quite small, that one's really small, so as to get an oval sort of shape. Um, rather than, you know, carefully doing the, everything the same size, what, you, what happens if you do that is you get flowers that are looking straight at you all the time. Um, whereas this, if you do it this way, it gives perspective. So um, it's more makes more of an oval shape and it just looks as if, you know, so if it's that way, you can see it's looking over there. If I turn it round that way, it's looking over there. Now it's looking up or down. Uh, and in an arrangement, I think, you know, um, it looks more natural if you've got flowers that are doing facing in different directions. That's got, oh wait, well, it, I knew I did it because I wanted to tell you that these these petals are uh, all made, whether they're that one or this one, they were all made from one length. So all I did in order to get the smaller ones was I've put my loops closer together, look. So the loops here are really close together and they're really far apart there. So it's easy to sort of um, change the the shape and um, so you can you can put your um, you can only do tall thin things you can do great long shaped leaves you can you can make the weirdest shapes you like out of wheat ears it's all it's all entirely up to you it's a very versatile sort of thing you can reshape it like that Right, so I just want to um, show you something that I call the onion technique. It reminds me of an onion. I've started this wheat ear off here, um, and I'm going to continue with it. Another thing I want to show you is that um, all this putting a little bit of glue on here can be a bit tedious, you know. You've got to like pick up your glue and put a little bit on and put your glue back again and you know so um, I sort of made this thing for myself sometimes that's the other way around and it has a sort of a wet palette inside it but um, so if I'm doing a wheat here um, I'll sort of put a, this on my finger I put a little spot of glue about there um, and then um, this means that when I'm making a wheat ear, I can um, I can just use this on the end of my, my finger. If you can see that, I can't see what I'm doing really well. But anyway, so I I would simply touch the tip of the wheat ear into the glue. So that that's an easier way for me to do it. So that that loop you notice was a little bit bigger. Um, this one's also going to be a little bigger and I can touch with my little dot of glue and another one make, again you can make these as big as you like because obviously you can vary the size of your vary the size of your loops I think that will be the last one okay I'll glue it nice and firmly and then I'm going to put a tiny spot of glue on the ends of these loops so a little one there, one there, one here and then get my tweezers and um, oh, sorry about that and bring this first of all together so that they stick together, hopefully, and then bring the whole lot down so that they stick like this. This is what I call onion. It's quite a nice effect. Um, you can pull it this way a little bit, you shouldn't do it with it. I should wait for it to dry really, and it will look like a heart. So it could be like a heart. This uh, card was done in that way. Brenda Morley made this card for me way, way, way back. 
Um, but that's these lovely flowers are, are done that way. Um, so that was an example of making your spacing differently. And of course you can do that in all kinds of ways. Um, if that's the effect that you want, you can, um, don't, those loops don't have to be all perfectly the same. They can be varied like this. Um, like this one, I've I've done my first loops quite spacey and then I've given it a nice strong edge. So you can do it that way. I think in this design I decided um, these ones are separately spaced. Um, just, just a different uh, way of creating the design. So you can see here I've made use of that um, onion technique that I like. Um, my These loops are close together and then I've done four or five big ones. Um, and <laughs> I just made these in sort of crazy all over the place shapes just because I thought that would be interesting. You'll notice as well that in order for, for me to get the effect of this flower looking that way and that flower looking that way, these ones are smaller than those, these ones are smaller than those. It's a different way of doing it and the leaves as well are done in, in a similar manner. So I just thought I would also show you um, some, as I was saying, you can make really strange shapes from wheat ears. So um, you can even bring the shape all the way, all the way around, back to go. Um, and put a little bit of glue here uh, and then um, tweezers will hold the whole thing together, I hope. It makes a very strange shape, I'm not quite sure what to... Well, it could be a petal, couldn't it? Be all sorts of things. Um, but they, it's uh, one of those things that you can do with wheat here and they make this, this lovely shape. Um, I should wait for the glue to be dry again. I hope it doesn't pop open. And then they, this itself can then be, be shaped into all sorts of peculiar extra shapes if you want. Um, so these were done that way. This, I'm not, <laughs> they're more odd than useful. Um, if anybody's got any really good uses for these here, yeah, strange shapes, then uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, but it's intriguing, I think, the way that these um, loops from a wheat ear sort of follow the shape and then they'll even turn corners and all sorts of things. So I think I've said before that wheat ears in their simplest form normally start off as a teardrop shape which can then be reshaped. But you can make um, wheat ears with, that start off as a circle or, or an oval. Um, and the way I would do that would be to use a dowel of some sort, knitting needle or something like that, and wrap around it. Uh, and then I can make the loop a little bigger, put some, put some glue where it needs to be, stick it down, make the loop a little bigger, just as you do with a wheat ear, but your basic, um, your first loop is around something round, so that gives you that gives you a nice round starting point if that's the effect you want. So what I did, I did that, I think here, on this um, bird's body. Um, I think that started off as a round shape. This this piece of work is actually all about wheat ears. If you look, the, the bower is a very, very long, narrow um, wheat ear. And there were big ones here that uh, on it, on its tail where they're grouped in groups of three. Um, and even the little flowers, these little iris type flowers have got uh, mainly wheat ears, made of mainly wheat ears. Not to mention the butterfly of course. 
So um, yeah, you can start it off on a down if you want um, to start with something round. You can also um, start with a, a very oval, almost flat shape, if you like. I would do that on a, a comb. Um, so I'd, I've slotted the first few, oh, what can I show you how I started? Um, so I would start uh, somewhere in the middle and perhaps, well, it depends how big you want this uh, initial thing to be. I'm going to use the glue for this. In the pot. Okay. And then come to the lids and down stick to it. And then do that uh, bigger one on either side. Could it work in? Round and bigger, etc., etc., and it will get bigger and bigger as we go. That means that your the first bit is flat, like so. So if you keep going, of course, you're going to make something like that, and then I've then you can I've, when you obviously when you've taken it off the comb, you can start re reshaping it as you like will have started like that and then I pulled it in this direction and squeezed it a bit and reshaped it. All depends what sort of um, shape you you want. But sometimes making it on a, a comb is a useful thing to do. You can also make a obviously a normal wheat ear. You can start at the bottom of your comb. I'll do it on the big side this time. On the wide spaced loops. Um, I normally make myself a little loop and slot it over the bottom prong. And then Not it over the bottom prong. And go over the next one. And then you can put the glue as you're going here. And up to the next prong. You know, you can get these. Um, this is a um, pet comb that I got from the pet shop for combing your dog or your cat and you can get them with their prongs all different distances apart so that you can do your wheat ears um, as you like and the effect you, that you get if you do this one as you see it's more of a more of a sausage shape I suppose isn't it than, than a tear, the, the normal teardrop shape that you would you would start with and sometimes that's that's the effect you want sometimes the design looks better like that with a softer shape at the bottom so um, these pet combs will help you to do that so the thing about using a pet comb however good they are is that you're not really in control over how far apart those prongs are if you make a wheat ear on a board, on the other hand, a quilling board covered in plastic, um, that means that you are in control of where the prongs can be, where the, how big the loops can be. So um, what I would do is um, put a pin in the board and then uh, lean it slightly towards me because it's going to get a bit of pulling on it 
and then um, put the next pin where, wherever I want uh, the gap to be. You might just prefer quilling on a, I mean making wheat ears on a board, some people do, they think that's a much more preferable way to do it. So that's sort of up to you if you want to, but you can you see I'm, I'm in control now. I can do like three close together and one far apart and uh, whatever I want. So uh, I'm doing exactly the same thing as before in that I'm making loops. Every time I go past this anchor point, um, I'm going to put a little dot of blue um, and the wheat ear is made in exactly the same way. So up until now we've been talking about wheat ears that are glued every time you come past this anchor point. Um, I think I touched on the idea before that you can make wheat ears that are loose. There is no glue here. So um, I would make the wheat ear in the same way. Keep on making the loops bigger. Of course it grows a lot quicker because you're not putting glue on all the time. Um, but I am making them in the, in the same way as I've shown you before. And in, and in this case I'm trying to make my loops all the same distance apart. And this might be my last one, I'm thinking. Yeah. You finish it off with a bit of glue. So this is what I would call a loose wheat ear. There's no glue in between. So you might be thinking, well, what are the advantages of that? Um, sometimes you just, wants to, you just want it to be quicker. And if your wheat ear is going to go down onto a background, we won't see one side of it, will we? We won't be seeing this side of it if I'm going to put it down on the design like this. So what sometimes um, I do is to put no glue as I go and then I'll put glue on this area and squash it in. I'm going to do that for you. So I don't normally um, advise people to use huge amounts of glue. Um, usually it's the less the better. Um, but in this case, it just saves time. And um, if I hold that there uh, for long enough, when it's dry, I'll discover it's nice and secure. Of course, that side's not going to look too nice. So this is for when you're not going to look at it because it's going to be down on a design. So here is um, a loose wheat here that I've made um, and another reason for making it nice and loose like this is because um, the effect can be different and very nice. If I let go now that I've made it, you see that its middle can be moved around. That's, that's quite a nice effect, isn't it? Move it up this end and go it there, almost. Making its own shape. I think you can see because this is one of those strips that's um, that changes colour. I've done that deliberately so you can see it's um, how it works. Um, and we can uh, shape this too and see what happens. If I do this and then shape it like so, and see what it, the effect that it gives all knocking against one side. So I think I did that for this one. See all the the coils are coming towards the middle, which is nice. This one might be even clearer. So the, the center is moving over to the middle, which is a, a very nice effect. Um, and depending on what shape you make, the middle will do all kinds of 
crazy things for you and give some lovely, lovely shapes here and there. Um, so, um, another thing that I just want to show you quickly um, is that you can actually make vortex coils out of wee tears. You can make them out of closed loose coils as well, but um, you know, uh, just wanted to point out here that vortex coils uh, can be made from loose wee tears. Um, there's a whole other video about making vortex coils, but anyway, we'll just touch on it as part of this loose loose wee tear thing. So this is a loose wee tear that I've made. Um, I'm going to squash it completely flat. And then and press it down so that each of the loops gets opened, hopefully. And then let it go. And then you can see the coils creating that um, vortex sort of shape. So, wheat ear coils. Simple to do, elegant to look at. Lots of different wonderful shapes. And excellent for long, thin leaves and stalks. You can make those shapes weird and wonderful. You can make the onion shape. Make them on a dowel, a round dowel if you like. Make them on a board with pins if you prefer. Or on a pet comb. And even vortex coils if you like. Have fun.